To cap off Death Guard Month on the channel, I'm going to be painting the hottest unit from the new codex, the Blight Lord Terminator. So I've really been wanting to paint some of these chonky boys, and I found one in my collection that I really, really like that is going through a metamorphosis and turning into a bug. And I really want to emphasize that. I think it's going to be fun. I think he's going to look creepy, but I want to play with my original color palette for my Death Guard, obviously, because I want it to be consistent with everything that I've done so far. But I think this is a great opportunity for me to do some other things, to maybe use those colors in slightly different ways and play around with some fun things to actually make this Terminator really stand out and be like, I don't know, a, the true elite character that he is. I'm very excited for this. Let's go ahead and jump straight into painting my Blight Lord Terminator. To begin, I primed the miniature using Wraithbone, making sure to get an even spray across everything. And I did this using a little bit of museum putty so that I could later detach his arms and make it a little bit easier to paint him. This was a solid choice. I definitely recommend if you can paint your miniature separated, do so. This time around, I'm gonna start with Black Templar on the weapons. And we're gonna be doing it a little bit different from how I have in the past on say like my Plague Marines or my Poxwalkers or even my Tallymen. Actually, the Tallymen's a little bit closer to how we'd be doing this. The reason is, I'm going to be painting the full gun in black. That one's gonna be normal. That will be exactly how I normally do all of my weapons. But what I'm going to be doing for the ax is I'm only gonna be doing the top portion of the handle. Um, basically that ringed area where he's gripping, like the actual grip, that's gonna be a different color. And I'm not gonna actually be doing it in blue and black like I would normally with the rest of the weapon armor for my Marines. So I'm really excited for this. I think it's gonna be a nice hint and it just, I think it helps emphasize them a bit more. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Well, while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. With the black done, we're gonna go ahead and move on to his armor because that's the next biggest portion and I wanna get it done as early as possible because it's the most recessed area. So for that, we're gonna use Militar Green and we're gonna hit basically all the normal areas that you would expect, the arm armor, the chest, but we're going to avoid his belly for right now because I wanna hit everything else first and be a little bit cleaner about it. Because for his belly, I have a particular plan. Like I said in the intro, he's going through this metamorphosis of turning into a bug and I sort of wanted to emphasize that by doing a wet blend using Plague Bearer Flesh and Militarum Green to sort of emphasize that that portion of him is organic. Um, and I really wanted to pick the Plague Bearer Flesh because I use that on my Nurglings and on my Poxwalkers. So that color is in my palette for my army, but I don't actually use it that often on my armored guys. So this is a way for me to start adding that in and playing with my colors a bit more. I'm on now to the first of my cleanup stages and I'll be doing a number of these throughout, but I'll only be showing this one just because it's the largest. We're gonna clean up any places where we got black or green where we didn't want them to make sure that our miniature is ready for the next steps. He is looking lovely. The cleanup stage always makes them just look so fantastic in my head, but it's time to add some new colors to him and we're gonna do that with Griff Hound Orange. Now, it's interesting because Terminator armor, when I was looking at it, when I was planning out the painting process for this guy, they don't actually have a whole lot of trim, which is what I usually paint in orange. So we will be hitting the few trim places that he does have, but I'm also going to sort of emphasize and use this color to pick out a few other areas on the armor, specifically in the joints. Normally on like my Plague Marines, I kind of avoid those and just have them be green. But for the Terminators, I'm gonna go ahead and paint them orange so it pops a bit more. We're coming back to Plague Bearer's Flesh. I now want to go ahead and paint up his bug arms because you might notice that he has some like bug arms sort of resting on his belly and everything. We're gonna paint those up in Plague Bearer's Flesh as well as I want to actually tie this color into his shoulder pads. So that face that he has on his shoulder, we're gonna do that entirely in Plague Bearer's as well as the um, wing iconography that was on his other shoulder. I'm not sure if it was supposed to be like a bone piece or a wing, like a bug wing. I chose to treat it as a bug wing and paint it in the Plague Bearer's Flesh. I really like how this step goes and I'm really happy with this color palette so far. I can't wait to add a few more colors though.
Before I get to any of the smaller detailed areas, I want to hit the one last big portion of this miniature that's still left to be painted. And we're going to use Magos Purple for that. I'm gonna hit the cloak with this, as well as the little bits of like, fabric that are on both arms. Now, there is one portion on the uh, arm with the bug wing that I'm not sure if it's actually fabric or not, but I really wanted to have that purple color tone a few other places on my miniature, so I went ahead and painted it even if it isn't actually fabric. But I really like how it's going, and Mago's Purple is one of those colors that you really have to take your time with it. It's very pale when you first put it down, so I actually had to layer this color up a bit before I got it to the hue I actually wanted. But once I did, it was perfect, and we moved on. And what we moved on to was a Yandin yellow. Now, I'm not gonna be using this a huge amount, and actually the next couple of colors will not be used a huge amount, but these are a little bit of texture that you add to the miniature, and it adds a little bit of color variety to them. So for a Yandin yellow, we're gonna apply this to some of the cords, some of the um, like cables and stuff on his armor, and then a little bit onto his face. I have that grating that's on the front of his like bug mask thing. So we're gonna paint that up, as well as the bits on his like, um, where his rebreather would have been and everything. So those all get yellowed. For the next color, we're gonna be using Vulpus Pink. And for this, it's just a few couple of key areas. He has a few fleshy bits on his arm that are um, some cords that are like covered in some flesh. We're gonna paint those up. He has one random tentacle on his back that we're gonna hit as well that's like sort of tucked under his cloak. But the main thing I want this color for is that like long looping tongue that's coming out of that nurg nurgling face that's on his knee. Oh, it's so good. We're gonna make sure to hit that up in some pink. Now it's time to use some Nazdrag Yellow, which is a color that I've used a little bit on my pox walkers, but really nowhere else. And we aren't going to be using it in a huge area here either, but I wanted to differentiate his eyes from what I had done with the end in yellow previously. And so, uh, Nazdreg works really well for that. It's a little bit of a darker, almost dirtier yellow color, and I thought it would kind of work as a bug like eye color. I've seen like some yellowish tints done for like bug eyes before, and so I wanted to do that there on his face as well as on his shoulder piece where there is the exact same eye style. So I just wanted to make sure that they matched. It's now time where I get to gush and tell you how much I love Skeleton Horde and that I'm gonna be using it on his hooves and his horns and his spikes and his teeth and all of that great stuff. But all joking aside, what I actually wanna talk about with Skeleton Horde this time is how it kind of, how contrast paint in particular can work on sort of cylindrical pieces. Cause when it comes to these spikes that are on his carapace, they took a little bit of time to actually get the paint to stick because contrast paint is sort of designed to pull away from the edges of a miniature, right? When you're applying it, that's sort of the idea because it creates that highlight that way. Well, I've noticed that when you have a cylindrical item um, or object on a miniature, like a spike or a, something like that, that where the surface is very rounded and there isn't really a flat panel for the paint to settle to, it kind of just pulls down and then you get like these dark spots at the bottom and the rest of the miniature is very pale and it almost looks like the paint didn't stick. So to avoid that, I went ahead and made sure to pay special attention to the spikes and keep painting them up, keep layering that contrast paint onto it until basically I was happy with the coloring. Once I was, that's when I was okay with stopping and moved on to other things. I'm about to add some Reichland's Flesh Shade to my miniature now that basically all of his base coats are down and I'm pretty satisfied with him. Honestly, you could call this guy done, obviously minus the base, but he's pretty much table ready. You could play with him immediately. But I wanna push him a little further and I still have a couple of things that I wanna do, let alone what I want to do to the base. So for now, we're gonna apply a Reichland's Flesh Shade over the entire miniature with two exceptions. We're not gonna hit the black or the purple parts, the black is mostly because it's gonna be dry brushed later and I'm not super worried about it needing a wash. The purple is because I really like that color that I got out of it and I don't wanna dirty it all. And I use Reichland's Flesh Shade to sort of dirty as well as blend my miniatures and I don't want it dirty. I don't want any of that brown tone on there so I'm just gonna leave it exactly as it is. I think the color is just perfect. Next up, I'm gonna grab some Blood Angels Red because while I was filming the Reichland flesh shade part, I realized I completely forgot to paint the Nurgling's eye on his knee. So we're gonna remedy that now and go ahead and paint it red. 
we're on to the final step for my Blightlord Terminator, and that is to do the final touches on his weapon, because as I mentioned at the very beginning of this episode, I'm going to be applying some blue to this. So we're gonna be specifically using Skink Blue, and I'm gonna lightly dry brush this onto basically the ax, as well as the gun. This is just something that I've done on all of my miniatures for my Death Guard. It really helps their, them stand out. They're very unique. And I like to believe it's sort of like this warp entropy that's overtaking their weapons. But the reason that he still has that handle clean is because he takes a little bit better care of his. So I really like it. It's He's done now, basically. Let's move on to the base. To start for the base, I'm going to paint the entire thing in Caliban Green. This is just a base coat I'm putting down to help with the swamp effect that I'm going to be doing later, and I also think it'll give the texture paint something to sort of grip to when I layer it next. My green paint is dry, but before I actually layer down the Armageddon dust to create my texture, I want to do a swamp base for this guy. I've mentioned that a few times already, and I have a particular plan. At first, I was just going to like block off an area for him, and I used the miniature to help me decide which section this would be, and then a, you know drew a line on it to sort of indicate that's where I want my texture paint to go. And then I put the texture paint down, and I was okay with it. And but then I was thinking about it, and I looked, I was looking at my tally and I'm like, okay, this is basically exactly what I did for him. I want to do something a little bit different. I want to push it a little bit more. And then I had the brilliant idea of putting a little island in there where I could put like a tuft or something. And I just, I was sold on it. So we put an island in there and then let the whole thing dry. With our texture paint now dry, we're going to apply some Agrath Earth Shade to the entire thing. I'm gonna do this pretty liberally. I want it to be a little bit darker because I'm gonna be dry brushing it here in a second to brighten it back up because I really want to emphasize this base a little bit more. Now that the earth shade is dry and it looks really good, we're gonna go ahead and take some Tyrant Skull and dry brush this over top all of the texture bits as well, making sure to do it lightly because we don't wanna lose too much of that shade that we put down, but I do wanna hit those raised areas to make that texture actually stand out a little bit more and pop really well. It turns out great and I really like this look. I should do this more on some of my miniatures. I really don't, but I really should. We're on to the final step, the Nurgle's Rot. My favorite bit at this point, because I'm really, really liking making these swamp bases, you guys. So we have everything prepped. We're gonna put, we're gonna do three steps now with our Nurgle's Rot. We're gonna do a one part Lamian Medium, one part Nurgle's Rot, mix that together, put our first layer down. We're then gonna let that dry and settle. And we're gonna apply this basically all over the entire green section that we have left open on the base. I don't want to avoid any areas. We just wanna put this down, but we want it to be thin. That's why we are doing the two parts um, to thin this paint down. Once it is dry, we're going to go back with Nurgle's Rot and just pure Nurgle's Rot straight out of the pot. We're going to apply this in the center of our stream that we've sort of created there. Now I'm doing this because I really want to create this like emphasis of depth or this uh, illusion of depth that the swamp bit will have and that's why we put that dark green color tone down with this over top and having this brighter green now it's going to make it look like there's some edge there and like it sinks down and you're not sure how deep down it goes and i really like that effect once that is dry i'm going to go back in and do what i did in my tallyman video which is really water down the nurgle's rot get it very slimy looking and put a glaze over top the entire thing one final time and this gives me the water effect that I think I was really, really wanting. When the first section had dried, it didn't quite have the sheen I wanted. Adding this other layer helped add that sheen, sheen back in. And now I have this glistening, glowing pond, or stream rather. And here he is on his swampy base. And I absolutely, think he came out fantastic. I cannot wait to paint up more of my Terminators. I am very excited to run these in my list and this guy has given me the confidence to go forward and be like, yes, I can absolutely paint several squads of seven of them because that's kind of where I'm leaning for them. But overall, I really challenged myself with this by trying to play with my color palette in a different way than I normally do. And while I didn't deviate super a lot from what I've done in the past. I do think the variations that I've done have added some texture to him and it's gonna make him stand out away from the rest of the army 
while still being cohesive. And for me, that's really important. It's actually something that I really like about painting specifically Chaos Marines, um, but in particular the Death Guard. One of the things that is great about these guys is they have so much going on in them that you can kind of pick some colors out, create a color scheme, and play with those in particular ways throughout your units to make them unique but cohesive. And I don't know if you can do that as well or easily with Space Marines. I've not tried. Like with the Hobby Knights, they have a color palette, obviously, but I haven't really worked to try to build more color into that where I can do that with Death Guard. And I imagine you can do that with like Zinch um, or like Thousand Suns and like that kind of stuff. Like they all have a color scheme, but because they're chaos, they're more flexible. And I find that really fun to paint. So this guy was a blast. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint him. This sort of wraps up my Death Guard uh, extravaganza that I was sort of going through as my new codex came out because I was very excited. I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing all that and everything. We'll get back to some new painting videos next week. And make sure that if you liked this video, to hit that like button, leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought of my Terminator, maybe what you want to see in the future for me painting, or if you just want to chat, say hi. I'm always there checking, checking the comments and everything, so feel free. And if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more hobby goodness. And if you want to see even further hobby goodness, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at hobby underscore night. I'll see you guys there. I'll see you next week. I've been Angela, you've been watching Howie Night, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.